Hi folks, we're back at the Lancaster County Wood Carving Show in Lancaster, PA, 2010, and it's June the 5th, or 6th, it's Sunday, and some of you remember Tom um, from last year, he did the pineapples, and he's going to explain some of the work he's doing today in relief carving for those of you that like to do relief. Okay, Tom, just take it away. Okay. Well, I have on display various pieces that I've worked on. Mostly the wood that we're using here is either walnut or mahogany. Um, I also have other pieces in other woods like cherry and um, oak and maple. But basically you can see that I cut into the wood and remove the wood so that you have either a raised subject matter or as in the case of the deer here, you have the subject matter sunken in the cutout area, but it's never higher than the original board was uh, when I took the board to my shop. In this particular piece, you can see the saw marks. That's rough cut lumber that I found, and, and I let the saw marks in because it adds interest, I think, to the background. But, um, in the process of relief carving, it's, it's very important to have a, um, a visual concept of where you want to go in the, in the wood. Uh, you draw your subject matter into the wood, and you first want to rough out the general form and not at all be concerned about the detail until the very, very end. And um, so it's basically a three-step process, the roughing out, the modeling, and then the detailing of the subject matter. What are you working on right now? Can you tell us some of the tools that you use? That's what a lot of people like to hear about. Okay. Uh, my preference in uh, relief carving is to use gouges. Um, I do not use power tools uh, because in my work, what I strive for is a good, clean edge. And with a gouge, you can actually cut the fibers of the wood, whereas when you use power tools, um, although they, they are desirable in some types of carving, for what I do, they would tend to tear the wood fibers and not give a good, clean finish. So for that reason, I use high-quality gouges. These happen to be uh, Swiss-made gouges that I find from Woodcraft Supply uh, Company. Okay. And uh, they take a, an edge very nicely. Um, of course, you want to keep them sharp at all times to do your best work. Um, and uh, that's my preference. And I have them in various sweeps. Here you can see number five gouge, the sweep being kind of a, a medium curvature here. Okay. Uh, they have a nice hexagonal handle so they don't roll on your table. Um, I have about 170 of these, but the truth is I try to use as few as possible. I find that if you can pick one or just a few gouges and use them to do the majority of your work, you end up being much more efficient and uh, you get a lot more done. And I've been saying that to my YouTube people out there that if they're interested in getting gouges, just get what you need for the project that you're working on. Is that what you, that's how you accumulated all yours or is it through... Um, buying sets? Well, you know, when I was beginning, I knew very, very little about wood carving. I just knew that I wanted to do it. Okay. Okay. And I went out and unfortunately I bought some tools that were not what I would consider today to be the kind of tools that I'd like to use. Right, right. Um, I guess the good thing is that I didn't buy a whole lot of them. Okay. I bought them one at a time. When I discovered this brand was what I preferred, okay. then I proceeded to buy them. But even at that, I only bought them one at a time as, as I needed them. All right. Well, can you show us how you use a gouge and, and okay. the mallet and give us a little demonstration for a few seconds here and, All right. and what you're working on? Well, this is a, uh, a project that I've had in my shop for a while. I've kind of neglected it, actually, and uh, brought it out just to, to finally get it done. I would say we're at the modeling stage. Uh, it's a walnut turtle. Okay. And um, my goal today is to get this um, modeled a little bit more. Um, so let's take an appropriate tool here. In the initial roughing out stage, of course, you're using an aggressive sweep on your gouge because right. you don't want to, you know, make it longer than it has to be. Right. We're at the point right now where we're using probably a number five or number three okay. gouge to get some more modeling accomplished. Right. And um, I like to use the, the mallet quite a bit at this stage because, again, that speeds up the work a bit. Um, 
you have to know how to push a gouge correctly, but you also can't be afraid to use a mallet. Okay. Is there so, a weight on the mallet? Is there certain weights in mallets that you use? I have different weights. These um, mallets are, well, this one would be a, a 20 ounce mallet. Okay. Uh, this one is a 12. Okay. I have mallets that are made entirely of wood. Uh, this one happens to have a, a polyurethane head on it. Okay. Does it keep it more keep it more together when you're pounding? Is that the reason for it? I, I think the um, manufacturer promotes the idea that it, it absorbs some of the shock. Oh, okay. So it's not transferred to your arm. Oh, that makes sense. So okay. Well, shows what how you actually hammer these things out and okay. gouge these out. Good. Okay. Um, one of the things that um, you learn as you're carving is that it's very important to keep your hand on the work. You know, oh, you, okay. There are, there are times when you might be up off the work, but when you get when you're getting closer to the modeling phase, you want to keep your hand down on the work for control okay. and for for your own safety. Um, you're going to build up some calluses on this part of your hand if you do this a lot, okay. and, and you'll okay. want that to happen. We've got about let's, two minutes. Uh, let's not uh, leave out this important step. <laughs> uh, we all need on. that, I'll tell you. <laughs> and you're better off to take short, uh, a series of short little hammers rather than large hits and, and singular wax with it. You're okay. better off just to push the gouge through with a series of taps like that. And as you gain confidence in your carving, it, it's very important that you approach the, the material um, without being timid. You want, you want to take the wood away and, and you want to do it um, in a way that you're not afraid that you're going to make a mistake. You want to be confident that you're taking away what you will need to, but you, you cannot be timid. You have, to, you have to go after the wood and the material. Oh, that's great. Absolutely great. And where are you from, Tom? I live in Lidditz, PA. Oh, Lidditz, okay. You're, you're a local. I'm a local guy. Local guy, good. All right, well, we're almost out of time here. Thank you very much for demonstrating and explaining all about the uh, craft of doing relief carving. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, Arlene.